Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Today we're looking at the new firmware updates available for the Cooler Master GP27U and GP27Q. If you watched our initial reviews of these displays, they launched with a few deal breaker issues, including the inability to use the HDR mode and adaptive sync variable refresh rates at the same time. Cooler Master, to their credit, did promise they'd release a new firmware for both that would address this issue along with several other issues, which was released a few weeks back. So let's take a look at what these updates have done to these monitors and whether we can now recommend them. The update process for both monitors is pretty simple. Download the firmware update from Cooler Master's website, follow their instructions to put it on a USB stick, plug that stick into the monitor, hit the update button in the OSD, and the monitor will reboot after a few minutes with the new firmware installed. The only thing you'll have to be careful about is ensuring you download the right firmware for your display, although Cooler Master's guide makes this quite easy to figure out. At the time of making this video, we tested the version 1.1 firmware for the GP27U and the V1.0 firmware for the GP27Q. Interesting naming there for the GP27Q's firmware, as while this is labeled 1.0, it is a, a newer version than what ships on the display. Let's start with the changes and improvements with the Tempest GP27U. The good news is that two of the main issues with this product have now been resolved. You can now enable both HDR and Adaptive Sync at the same time. You can also now enable a 160Hz refresh rate in the Adaptive Sync mode or HDR mode or both. So this means the full capabilities of the display can be enabled at the same time. One of the points of contention about this firmware update was that Cooler Master said the reason why HDR and VRR weren't able to be enabled at the same time was to minimize the potential for flickering. So does this firmware update have flickering issues when HDR and VRR are enabled? The answer to that is yes, but also that it depends. The GP27U did produce noticeable flickering in our usual flickering stress tests we use for monitor reviews, which include the NVIDIA G-Sync Pendulum demo and also a neat utility called SmoothFrog. When aggressively ramping the frame rate up and down, particularly in the lower parts of the refresh range, I did spot some brightness fluctuations and flickering that are not normally seen on other monitors, including those with HDR and full array local dimming. FALD plus VRR is tricky, but it is possible to do in a stable fashion, and the GP27U doesn't quite hit that mark. Even at some specific lower refresh rates, I was able to notice flickering even at consistent frame rates. With that said, these are stress tests designed to break monitors and expose flickering, at least in the way I use them. I played a variety of games on the GP27U using the HDR and VRR modes, as well as the maximum 160Hz refresh rate capabilities, and didn't see flickering to any significant degree. In fact, in the vast majority of instances, the GP27U ran just fine, suggesting that what I saw using Smooth Frog could be an outlier. As most games don't feature huge jumps in frame rate at the drop of a hat or quite as aggressive of a motion test, it makes this sort of flickering less likely in practice. However, I can't say there is no flickering here, as, well, I could replicate it using a stress test. And also, I can't test every single game that people may play on this monitor. I've seen all sorts of examples over the years where a specific game or even a specific part of a game will trigger an issue on a monitor and this just isn't feasible for us to test. So at this point, all I can really say is that while I don't expect you'll see flickering the majority of the time, it does have the potential to flicker and it may flicker in specific scenarios that don't play nice with this hardware. So that's a bit disappointing to discover, but I guess it's somewhat expected based on what Cooler Master told us about the firmware limitations previously. What about other changes in this firmware? Well, one thing I did notice was that input lag is now lower due to reduced processing latency. Previously, the display reported about 3.5 milliseconds of processing delay in the SDR mode. With this new firmware update and a retest, it's now at below 0.5 milliseconds, which is great news. Unfortunately, though, HDR input lag is still the same and quite significant at 14 milliseconds of processing delay, though this hasn't in increased with the introduction of VRR support in this mode. The sRGB mode is less accurate out of the box now with a noticeably poor white point, however this update unlocks white balance controls in the sRGB mode, so this overall is actually an improvement as you can now tweak the white balance while the gamut remains clamped. I was able to achieve better results after this update thanks to this new capability.
HDR performance has also changed slightly. By default, all three HDR modes are now dimmer than they were previously. However, the best mode in terms of EOTF tracking, the medium dimming mode, is still capable of over 1000 nits of peak brightness, so this isn't a huge deal. What's also good to see is that the HDR modes have unlocked white balance controls. And while the user color mode doesn't seem to work correctly, switching into the native white balance mode does improve HDR accuracy. Under this configuration, I was able to improve P3 saturation from a delta E of 10.45 down to 6.32 at the cost of 10% window brightness, dropping from 1485 nits to 1214 nits. Unfortunately, local dimming in the SDR mode remains broken, and this is something Cooler Master has confirmed they are still working on. KVM switch functionality has improved though. As for the GP27Q firmware update, well, unfortunately, things aren't as good here. This firmware update does enable HDR and adaptive sync at the same time. However, the flickering issue I reported with the GP27U is also present here in basically an identical fashion. So everything I said earlier about HDR plus VRR on the GP27U is also true for the GP27Q. Your mileage may vary as to how noticeable this is. HDR accuracy has improved thanks to the ability to change the white point, so this is also a pretty similar experience to the GP27U. In the initial firmware, my GP27Q had a strong blue tint in the HDR mode, but now that the white balance can be switched to native, this can be fixed, again at the cost of brightness. I saw P3 saturation delta E's drop from 26 on average down to 9 with this tweak, which is a substantial improvement, although not fully accurate. This came at the cost of 10% window brightness, falling from 1326 nits to 1082 nits. The HDR presentation looks better as a result, and now, of course, can also be run with Adaptive Sync enabled. However, there are many broken aspects to this firmware update that aren't present on the GP27U. One is that the sRGB mode is now fully non-functional. It doesn't clamp the gamut anymore, no matter what setting you use. Previously, this mode works. Now, it doesn't, so Cooler Master broke this with the firmware update. I also spotted a brightness bug where the monitor is surprisingly dim in the HDR mode until you change an OSD setting, which then restores the correct brightness. For example, you could drop the brightness from 100 to 99 and the brightness of the monitor would drastically improve, but then increasing it back up to 100 would also then increase brightness. This is typically an issue when switching between the SDR and HDR modes, and it's quite annoying as it prevents you from getting the correct levels of HDR brightness until you intervene briefly in the OSD. Another bug I saw was color banding while specifically using the 165Hz refresh rate mode. This makes the games and other applications look pretty ugly, but it isn't present when dropping the refresh rate down to 144Hz. Not sure what happened there, but it's not ideal and is clearly a bug with the latest firmware update. So do these firmware updates change my conclusions about the Cooler Master GP27U and GP27Q? Well, if we focus on the GP27U, I think the latest V1.1 firmware does make the monitor better than the state it launched at. The ability to run HDR and VRR at the same time, plus broader 160Hz support, removes the two main deal breakers that made it impossible to recommend in the initial review. But the GP27U still does have some issues and ends up far from the perfect display. For example, I find it difficult to recommend a product that has flickering issues. I don't know how often you'll experience flickering during your gaming sessions, but the monitor can flicker during stressful scenarios, so at the very least it's at risk of this while gaming. This is less of a deal breaker than not supporting HDR and Adaptive Sync at the same time, but it's not a good situation and for many buyers this will indeed be a deal breaker. The GP27Q is also susceptible to flickering issues when HDR and Adaptive Sync are enabled together, but on top of this, the latest GP27Q firmware has many other issues, including a broken sRGB mode, brightness bug in the HDR mode, and color banding at the maximum refresh rate. Many of these issues weren't present in the initial firmware, so in my opinion, Cooler Master has actually made the product worse. It really feels like this firmware update was rushed out the door and barely tested because things like color banding at 165Hz should be very obvious to anyone thoroughly testing it. So the GP27Q is still a product that I cannot recommend due to deal breaker issues, and if you're an existing owner, I would think twice before upgrading the firmware. The GP27U is maybe a borderline product at the moment. If you're fine with the possibility of flickering, then there are some strengths and positives about the display, but I could totally understand skipping the product entirely due to this issue.
What I'm really not a fan of is Cooler Master effectively beta testing this monitor with buyers. The 1.1 firmware available for the GP27U should have been what shipped with the monitor, even if that meant delaying it. Buyers should not have to put up with a monitor missing key features in this sort of price tier, and they shouldn't have to sit through one broken firmware update before a second proper one is released. I'm even less impressed with the GP27Q situation, which has been made worse via an update that clearly wasn't tested extensively. Releasing poorly tested firmware to paying customers is not good. This feels like a beta release, except it's labelled version 1.0 and is, well, it's being trialled right now with paying customers, people that have bought this display and forked out at least $500 US. Again, this product probably should have been delayed until the firmware was in a usable state. To Cool Master's credit, they are committed to addressing these problems and fixing other issues like local dimming in the SDR mode, and you know, they have been engaging with the community on Reddit, but I think the lesson here is really that a company shouldn't have to do this, it's better to get things right before you launch. Anyway, that's it for this brief look at the new firmware updates on these Cooler Master monitors. If you do appreciate our independent testing, please do consider subscribing to the channel and also signing up to our Patreon or Float Plan. Links to those are in the description below. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.